All right, welcome back, everybody. So we just finished talking about numerical approximations to differential equations. And again, that's more on the applied side of things. So computing a solution and seeing how practical it is to get to an approximation is on the uh, kind, of, kind of on the cusp, actually, between pure and applied math. Uh, because the question you're trying to answer has to do with an ODE, which usually comes from, a, from outside of math. But the way that we study that uh, computability, of, a, uh, computability of, a, of an approximation is very much a pure math subject, I feel. Um, and we're going to start to test that a little bit now. Because we'd like to uh, revisit the existence and uniqueness theorem with a little more, a little more uh, rigor. So the last time we saw existence and uniqueness, we saw it in terms of the differences between linear and nonlinear differential equations. And we saw that nonlinear uh, equations are a fair bit nastier to work with in general uh, than their linear counterparts. So for linear differential equations, we actually have a proof, a solid proof that a solution exists for a given initial value problem that is a linear ODE. Uh, and that solution is exactly the uh, integrating factor method that we came up with. So in some cases, proofs are constructive. And turns out that we're going to construct exactly the same uh, sort of, or we're going to create another constructive proof here uh, in the next couple of videos. In order to illustrate the process, I need to kind of walk you through what our goals are in the first place. So remember that we are starting with a, an initial value problem, dy dt equals f of t by y, and f of t0 equals y0. And I make a comment here in the notes that you can translate this into a different differential equation, or you can translate this guy uh, to be t minus, uh, no, t plus t0 by y plus y0 if you want to go ahead and center this guy at the origin. So notice this does change up the differential equation a little bit on the right hand side, but it uh, turns out translations don't do anything to this derivative over here, right? d of y plus y0 over d of t plus t0 doesn't change, uh, doesn't change the derivative at all here. So the right hand side is perfectly uh, is left hand side is perfectly fine. The right hand right hand side may translate a little bit when you change variables, but that's what this statement here is on the uh, the left hand side. I'm making sure that we that we're using a specific uh, a specific initial condition, and that's all. So what I'd like to first draw our attention to is that this differential equation dy dt equals f of t by y. Uh, this is all well and good, but differential equations have uh, integral cousins. And you can check here, if I integrate from, uh, and let's, let's make sure we do this properly so the pure mathematicians don't yell at me. So from 0 up to t of dy ds integrated ds is equal to the integral from 0 up to t of f of s y of s ds. This is an equivalent way of writing down this uh, differential equation, especially with the initial conditions we're given, the, uh, the lower bounds actually wind up going away. So I'll wind up with a y at, of t minus a y of 0. And this is going to equal something on the right hand side that is to be determined. Right, And that's the whole point here. This guy goes away because we set it to 0 automatically. So what we actually have here is kind of an interesting uh, restatement of the differential equation as something called not a differential equation, but an integral equation. Go figure. And sometimes there are differential equations that also have integrals in them, and they are called, wait for it, integral differential equations. Yes, we're very creative when we name things, we mathematicians. But the point is that this boxed equation is another way of representing this differential equation. So solutions to the boxed equation are also solutions to the, uh, to the differential equation we started with. But notice something interesting that's going on in the box here. In order to solve for y, I need to know what y is. 
And that is a bit of a hiccup, which is why we don't actually use uh, integral differential equations uh, as a starting point for, uh, for undergrad math. But there is kind of a peculiar point here that if I know what y is, then y satisfies this equation. It's what's called a fixed point of this, uh, of this operator. Right, so if I create a linear operator L of, I don't know, let's go ahead and call this x, and define it to be the right-hand side of the equation here, x of s ds, then if I plug in a solution to the differential equation, then I actually wind up with the same function. I wind up with something that is unchanged by this integral operator. And this is the, uh, is the motivation behind what's called Picard's method. Uh, and Picard uh, actually created uh, effectively a fixed point iteration scheme. So it's actually very well known in, uh, in analysis in advanced calculus, but fixed point iteration. Fixed point iteration schemes are actually really great ways to get solutions to differential equations. And let me see if I can't convince you here. We are going to try to get this uh, this fixed point solution by getting uh, by making a really really uh, a really terrible approximation to the solution, and then iterating this guy through this operator. And what do I mean here? Is that I'm going to create a whole bunch of functions phi n plus 1 of t is going to equal the integral from 0 to t of f of s by phi n of s ds. And this is Picard's method here, where we go ahead and take phi sub 0 of t equal to the 0 function. And we just iterate this for n greater than or equal to 0. And did I get the index right this time? Yes, I did. OK, go me. So let's see exactly what's going on here. Like if we, if we can create an iteration scheme, uh, we're, we're effectively creating a sequence of functions. And these functions, supposedly, uh, if, we do this, if we do this correctly, these functions phi sub n are going to converge to the, to the solution of this differential equation, and specifically of this initial value problem. And that's would be the uh, the way to pr that would be a way to prove the existence and uniqueness theorem is that there is some limiting function out there that satisfies the initial condition uh, and is smooth enough so we can differentiate it and get back to the differential equation and show that it is a solution after all. So there are four questions that we have to answer as we go through this proof. So I'm just screwed. I'm not going to write them down because they're right over here. So do each of these phi n equations or phi, uh, phi n functions, I should say, so that's not equations, that's functions, right? Uh, do each of these phi n functions actually exist? In other words, if I integrate or can I integrate these functions, are the functions continuous? Is there, is there any way that these guys uh, break down along the iteration? Uh, two, does this sequence of phi n's actually converge, right? Does it converge to anything at all, right? We don't know. Uh, number three, uh, if it does converge, what sorts of properties does that limiting function phi, right? Not an index phi sub n, but phi itself. What sorts of properties does that limiting function have, right? And in particular, does it solve the equation? Does it solve the differential equation? And I should put that right back. Oh, that would be way back up at the top, yeah. So anyway, does it solve the initial value problem? And number four, of course, is it the only solution, right? So we're going for existence and uniqueness as the title of the section uh, advertises. So let's go ahead and stop this video here because this is a great introduction. I think it's a good, okay, that's, that's touted. That's, okay, a little bit of modesty here. This is an introduction to uh, Picard's iteration or Picard's method. Uh, and this is effectively going to be our proof strategy uh, for, for showing that the existence and uniqueness theorem is valid. So let's go ahead and stop here. And in